Um, good evening, guys. Good evening, Harry. Thank you. Okay. My name is Harry Dunku. I'm a digital artist in Nigeria, based in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I have been in the digital space for about five years now. Um, I have worked as a freelancer and I currently own my own company, which I started, I founded in um, 2015, it's about two years ago. Um, the name of the company is Scroll Entertainment. So um, what we do basically at Scroll Entertainment is to um, solve problems for um, organizations um, by creating um, unique content, digital arts content uh, for the brands, basically. Um, so my clients are Diamond Bank, uh, Marybeth, uh, Budgets, Ed Salad, Vekid Benkisa, Western Lotto, and a bunch of others. So um, some of my works, this is, um, if you are based in Nigeria, you probably would have seen this. Um, this work is, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can, Harry. Okay, great. So um, this work um, is um, on, I think it's still currently displaying on all Diamond Bank ATMs in Nigeria. So um, if you are based in Nigeria, you probably would have seen this work. Um, this was for Diamond Bank, the both of them were for, for Diamond Bank. Um, this other guy on the right was also for Diamond Bank, a concept character for Diamond Bank. Um, and this was also done for Diamond Bank as well and was published in newspapers in Nigeria. Um, some other concept works I've done, I did this um, concept uh, character for, uh, this is actually a concept character based on the designs that was given, that was given to me um, to be done for Vortex Comics. Um, Vortex Comics is a comic uh, entertainment company based in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria. And this character was called um, Ogun, that's the god of iron, okay. Um, these are some other characters I created. I created these characters for um, a book that was recently launched in Lagos. Um, she's, the one on the left is a um, young, upwardly mobile, average Nigerian female from Edo State, Nigeria. Um, and this other, these two characters on the side are twins for the book as well. So, um, these are some other works I did in my spare time. Uh, this is um, this work was based on me just trying to tell a story of how uh, um, a good-looking girl can <coughs> sorry a good-looking girl can turn out to be pretty tough, like having um, an alligator as a pet and stuff like that. Uh, this work was done um, to to convey my working hours, how that I spend um, about 10,000 hours literally um, of ridiculously crazy practice, um, um, sometimes working into late nights and stuff like that. So uh, this was just to um, to communicate the, the idea behind that hard work, my hard work. This was also another character I created in, I think about two years ago, based on a legendary, um, a legend, a legend called Queen Amina or of Zaira in Nigeria, a 3D concept I did. Uh, this particular work was um, a concept I did in 2015. Um, I entered, I did this work for a, um, art competition um, organized by Samsung in Nigeria and I came second in the competition. Um, the story is, the idea behind the painting is um, trying to portray uh, Lagos, the city of Lagos, um, the cityscape of Lagos in the future. Um, we have like flying cars and stuff in the, um, in the air and then we have like this uh, major uh, landmark um, which is currently in Lagos right now as we speak. You know, the idea behind this work was to show that um, even through the passing of time, we still have Asian landmarks, uh, you know, that are, um, that survive through the years. 
you know so yeah and i think i titled this work 17 echo 1701 something like that so the idea behind that um is that um even um in the future in lagos because lagos is like a very populated city so even in, in the future we still have like that's why the, fa the fact that cars are levitating and stuff we still have like um traffic situations and stuff like that okay so um let's let's go straight into the meat of the conversation today um the question basically is what is concept art so um there are many ways to define concept art but i think in a nutshell concept art is just um uh, what you do the the it's actually the it can actually be defined literally based on what the word is you know so concept art is actually an art that is based on a concept so um if for example you want to do a movie or you want to do um, an animated feature film or you want to design a game or something it usually always starts with concepts so um a concept art is based on the story so um concept art is always driven by the story the narrative um, based on the right the writer and um whatever it is that the director or whoever it is that is the um or who is directing the project um gets to gets to do so um basically the major influences in concept arts um because concept arts actually influences three major industries um, we have other industries like literature industry and stuff but i, I think that majorly uh, the film the animation and the game industry um, are driven or the concept art actually drives these three industries majorly um, in the film industry pipeline for example you have um, a, a script or a, sc a screenplay um, in pre-production phase so the concept art is so concept art is so important that you actually have to do concept art uh, before things like storyboard for example because it just just right after a script or a screenplay is produced you have to do concept art so um, concept arts for um, a movie uh, would entail engaging different different artists different digital artists who would um, based on the story or the script or the narrative uh, they would come up with different images different ideas different um, environmental designs character designs uh, production designs, set designs um, even vehicle designs and crazy things like that um props and things like that so it's up to the concept artists to come up with all these things right before um major production like storyboarding and the actual shooting of the film um, takes place um and then in an animation pipeline for example um the concept art usually comes in in the same way as the film um, industry whereby um, just right after the script, you have to um, design concept for the characters, um, the environment, and production design, and things like that. And also in the game industry. So um, I am very humble. Like um, Stuart said, uh, the truth is, I don't know everything. And I have taught a lot of people. Like I still do teach a lot of people in Nigeria. And uh, I've done a lot of trainings in digital arts. And I always tell them that um, I am one of the most down-to-earth person when it comes to learning stuff. I'm very open to learning stuff. And I'm so open that I even most most of the times I usually end up learning stuff from the students. <coughs> Sorry. I usually end up learning stuff from the students themselves. So I what everything I'm saying or everything I'm going to say is not necessarily cast in stone. I'm just giving my own interpretation of what's based on my experience um of what i believe um would work for you it might not work for you you know but it's just uh, my own two cents and hopefully it will be beneficial for you um, in the course of your career as a, a digital artist so um the major challenge that i, I have found basically um in digital arts and especially in Africa, because um, right now we are at a very, very infant, uh, very, very infant phase. The industry is really small, like it's so small in Nigeria right now that we happen to know each other, you know. And um, it, it's humbling because it also makes us realize that we actually have to um, come together and, and collaborate. 
and allow for us to move the industry forward. Um, so the major challenge that I found basically is um, the the battle between money and passion. So for the average freelancer, I'm, I'm speaking to I'm speaking about myself as well because I was once a freelancer. You know, this this um, battle in our head as to um, whether we should do stuff that we love to do or whether we should do stuff for money. So there's always, um, um, as long as you are an artist, you always have to fight this battle in your mind. Um, you find yourself in situations whereby even to as little or as basic as stuff as posting or creating artworks for Instagram, your Instagram handle, for example, you're actually caught between creating stuff that you love to do and um, creating stuff for money. So um, most times when clients clients um, call me, I found that most times, uh, my own personal experience though, most times I found that uh, the work that I do based on, that I'm passionate to do, ends up being much more interesting than, the, um, than what is given to me um, based on me having to deliver or me being paid. So I find it more interesting to do a what I'm passionate for than to do a paid job. So as a concept artist, you always have to um, choose. You get to that crossroad where you have to choose between money and passion. And and for most people, um, for most people, passion might be having to um, create do characters like superheroes from international comics or international movies, as opposed to creating or thinking of characters from Nigeria. You know, I, I used to have this challenge with um, local artists in Nigeria, whereby uh, where they used to, um, they end up doing more fan art than trying to create new characters. And I'm like, dude, why are you guys, can't you guys just try to, why don't you look inwards? Why don't you try to create a new character? Because um, sincerely speaking, I, I because um, I haven't worked with so many international um, companies, but I believe that um, to get a job, to land a job in maybe Disney or Marvel, for example, you have to have a portfolio of original characters, not a portfolio of fan art. So I've always been of the opinion that, and I used to um, encourage artists to ensure that you spend more time creating your own unique characters. And, and for the same way for a musician, for example, they say that the best songs are written when you are going through the stuff that you're actually singing about. You know, so I think that as an artist, you you should tell more about your experiences. You know, tell more. I'm telling more about your experiences. The art that will resonate more with people is when you tell original stories based on your own experiences. Look back at your past. Look back. Look back at what you're going through at the moment and try to tell stories about it. Recently, on my Instagram page, I I I, I started doing um. Um, content or I started doing artworks based on things like music because I love music a lot, you know, so that's my passion. Um, that's the passion side. But on the money side, you have to think of when clients give you jobs, you have to think of most times jobs don't necessarily, most of the jobs I get in Nigeria are um, locally inspired jobs. So of course I have to do local stuff. Well, um, as opposed to, um, as opposed to the average person, like I said, which is an advice, um, you have to try as much as possible to balance between the money and the passion side. If the money side is giving, is requesting for you to do more of local contents, embrace it. If the passion side is more of trying to do fan arts, I would suggest to, more of trying to do fan arts for international characters and things like that, I would advise you that you try to cut down on that and look inwards, look, look at your experiences, look at, um, what you've been through, look at what you're going through, look at your current environment, look at the city of Lagos, if you're based in Lagos, look at your city in Africa, wherever it is that you are, and try to um, try to tell stories or try to create um, artwork and concepts are based on your experience, your current experiences in um, wherever you are. So moving on to um, some basic form facts that might be of interest to you. Um, the anime market in Japan was worth more than 1.6 trillion trillion yen, that's about um, 1. 14. 1 point, fourteen point one billion dollars in 2014, uh, and around 60 percent of the world's animated TV shows originate in Japan. So, why is this fun fact important? The truth is, the anime industry is self-sufficient. Like Stuart said, um, it's self-sufficient in itself. In, in fact, that they have the market already. And right now, if you look at Africa, the market isn't really there. 
you know, we are just starting out. Um, the average person in Nigeria doesn't really um, embrace the medium of animation and um, digital art, basically. Um, so we have a problem to solve. And what's the problem? The problem is that we have to look inwards, look for local content, um, look for things, tell stories that people are um, can resonate with, uh, people can relate with, you know, and that's basically that everything still boils down to, to content, local content creation. And anime, the anime market or the anime stu um, industry, for example, is a perfect example of how that Japan looked, um, the Asian market, uh, Japan and China looked inwards to create their own. Um, their own content. Uh, of course, we cannot compare the current um, animation industry in Nigeria because um, Japan is about 17, and uh, it started in about 1917, so that's a long time ago, and we are just about starting out. So, but the idea is we need to look inwards because um, there's something I always say to you don't expect um, an American artist to be able to tell a Nigerian story better than you. Um, if you play the video game um, Call of Duty, there was a scene of Lagos, you know, and I looked at it and I'm like, cool. But if you really think about it, the people who are supposed to be creating the concepts, that concept for the city of Lagos in a game, in a AAA game like um, Call of Duty, are actually supposed to be artists from Lagos, you know. So, but I don't blame, I don't blame the um, the guys in the US because they probably looked at like, okay, we can't really find anyone who is doing stuff in Nigeria, which is the reason why we need to embrace local content creation. Because if we did, when they get to look out for us on places like ArtStation, they, uh, they look out for our portfolio on places like ArtStation, they are inspired to want to engage us one way or the other. You know, so it's, it's a client call to all digital artists to begin to look inward, especially um, those of us based in Africa. Um, so some uh, for those of us who are into uh, 3D modeling and things like that, because I've, I've had requests um, for for me to create characters. Uh, there was one particular request that came on um, our, which is Africa West, um, West Africa um, Association on Facebook. They asked me to do um, a, a 3D um, character model sheet of um, Black Panda. And um, because they want the 3D artists wanted to model Black Panda, um, the thing is, there is more than enough content online because people are probably thinking, where where can I find African content? The truth is that if you check ArtStation, if you check um, Instagram, if you check Pinterest and Google, you actually will see um, a lot, an awful lot of um, concept art. So I'm just going to slide over to my browser here, so you see. Um, this is my Pinterest. This is Pinterest, um, and I just searched for African concept art. And as you can see, there is an awful lot of there's an awful lot of um, concept two um, D concept um, artworks for us to use as reference to model characters in three D. For those of us who are in the three D space, okay. So we have ArtStation. Instagram. On Instagram, there's a guy called Nubia Nubia Mansi. Nubia Mansi um, posts stuff um, based on um, concept art, based on fantasy, African fantasy, and um, sci-fi. So if you follow someone like Nubia Mansi, you can get more than enough concepts for you to create your characters in 3D. Um, also, we have AfricanDigitalArt.com and also African Digital Art on Instagram. Okay, then um, my solution, because I actually thought about this um, after Femi talked to me about it. Um, I really appreciate um, CG Africa for what they are doing. I appreciate the fact that they are very passionate about um, the digital art industry, uh, the CG industry in Africa. Um, I appreciate them for this opportunity also to be speaking to you guys. And um, I actually thought about it since the last time we spoke. And I actually realized that I had an idea at some point that I started out, but I did not um, um, follow through with it. It's called the Sketchathon. So the same way you have like hackathons where um, IT guys come together and they get to brow, um, they get to um, um, brainstorm and create new, um, new solve problems basically in the IT space. Uh, we can have like our own Sketchathons or something. 
um, scroll scroll scatterton is something that is based on that idea and it's something that um, an idea that I've had for a very long time and um, having spoke to um, Femi of CG Africa I'm going to go ahead to make sure that we start this so um, we'll be doing this um, regularly maybe like um, once every two months so we'll just have like um, artists from Nigeria from Africa from all around Africa South Africa and all parts of, of Africa um, to engage artists to um, spend like maybe 24 hour if 24 hour period of just drawing sketching uh, uh, painting and doing concept stuff uh, we hope that with this um, initiative, we'll be able to inspire the creation of more local content in Africa. Um, and it's going to kick off real soon, like um, hopefully in the next one month. So um, if for those of us that are watching this um, webinar, hopefully um, I would um, share the link or something, or I'll share the link with um, CG Africa. So when the time comes, you guys can take part in it. And it would be, I believe this would be of huge benefit to the CG industry uh, for those of us who are looking for concept arts to create. Oh, thank you. So yeah, that's basically my um, presentation. Um, this is my handle on Instagram. You can find me easily. Um, my name is consistent on all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Thank you very much. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Harry. We really appreciate your diligence in putting everything together. And we we really enjoyed your slides. There's loads of uh, information which we have to digest afterwards. Um, we are being pushed for time now, so we need to move quickly to Brian from Kenya who will be discussing the the importance of uh, using social media to expand the market in Africa with we know Stuart has talked about the size of the market so definitely we need to do something at least to expand the market and we would we'll, we'll like to listen to Brian to see what he has presented for us in doing this. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Um, I've got another question here for Harry, and this is from Obioha Clement. He said, can one get better in digital painting and illustrations by trial and error and or with the guidance of an expert. I'm gonna copy and paste the question for you here as well so you can refer to it. Okay. All right, so uh, that's uh, a good question. Like I said, um, I'm still a learner because uh, I follow people like uh, Aaron Blaze and um, some great guys out there. Um, and um, I hear them say that they are learning, so who am I to say that I'm not learning? Anyways, um, uh, digital painting and illustration by try and error. No, you cannot learn. Like, the best ways to learn is intentional. Like, learning has to be, even when they say you put 10,000 hours, it's not just 10,000 hours, actually 10,000 hours of useful practice. You know, so it's not just putting 10,000 hours. You have to be deliberate. Um, I do, um, and then one thing you have to do is um, try to get a mentor. Um, try to get a mentor, try to follow some people, um, some people who have a particular style. Like for me, I, I, the people I follow on Instagram are intentional. I only follow people that, um, majorly follow people that are in the animation space, um, who are illustrators in the animation space. There are many great illustrators out there um, in, the com in, the, um, in comics and stuff like that, but if I did that, it would be like conflict. It would, it would conflict with uh, my um, goal and my um, personal career pursuits at the moment. So um, I, I would advise that you get a mentor um, or get um, and then have some have people you follow. Um, there are curriculums. I think that you can get curriculums easily online. You can download curriculums from um, from prominent um, digital art. 
um, in their curriculum be itself. Like me, that was what I did. But if you want to learn um, from um, an academy or something, I think that you should go that route. But you have to, it can't be trial and error. It has to be intentional. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, I'm sure he, Clement, has got the message uh, loud and clear.